Good morning. Welcome to day three of the TAFS Future in Africa conference. Um, broadcasting to you across the globe. Uh, we have had participants um, and speakers from um, all parts of the, all, all four corners of the globe, um, spanning uh, many time zones. And uh, the, as, as I mentioned slightly earlier, um, we have a slight change to the uh, lineup this morning in terms of the running order. Um, the first presentation will be uh, a pre recorded session from um, Ira Pasta, who is unable to join us today, uh, but has been kind enough to send a, uh, a pre recording. Uh, that will be followed up uh, by Professor Ilya Stamba. Uh, then at 9am PST, we have uh, a panel session led by, by Ben Zion and will be joined by five other speakers um, and re renowned uh, individuals. Um, next up will be Hans Loom, followed by a conference chairman, um, Alexander, and then um, an additional slot at uh, 12 noon uh, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Um, uh, Mr. Goodluck will be talking to us about um, uh, digital, apologies, digital, um, I will remember it, digital marketing, digital marketing in Africa, I do apologize. Um, as you can appreciate, uh, it's been quite a, a marathon session the last two days. And um, we've all been work burning the, the candles at both, both ends, um, both on camera and off. So I'd just like to say thank you to, the, uh, to, to everyone that's been involved in the, in the conference uh, in supporting it in, in various um, capacities. Uh, without it, we, uh, we couldn't be here today. Uh, so um, now that we have uh, some additional people joined, I will now um, share uh, uh, Ira Pastor's uh, presentation. He is um, the CEO of BioQuirk Inc. Um, amongst other things, um, he will be talking to us about accessing nature's clues for human regeneration, di disease reversion, and reju rejuvenation, which is obviously a topic that uh, has a theme that's run throughout the conference with uh, the likes of Professor Aubrey uh, de Grey and others that have joined us. Okay, um, could you just confirm? Uh, unfortunately, I can't, I haven't got video. Um, Malak, could you just confirm that uh, you've got the video on screen? Before I play it, unfortunately, minimizes, I can't see anyone um, during, the, during the playback. Yes, I see um, PowerPoint. Okay, excellent. Okay, I shall start playing it then. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you everyone for the opportunity to uh, present uh, today. I apologize that I cannot be there in my uh, live form, but at the end of this presentation, uh, you will see my contact information. Feel free, anyone to reach out anytime uh, to me, uh, either via email or, or phone. Uh, so the title of my uh, discussion today uh, is assessing uh, nature's clues for human regeneration, disease reversion, and rejuvenation. Uh, my name is Ira Pastor. I'm the chief executive officer of a, a U.S.-based life sciences company here uh, on the U.S. East Coast, focusing on uh, the chronic degenerative diseases responsible for human degeneration, suffering, and death. Um, I thought place to start out uh, would be with a global 
human health care uh, situation analysis to put everything in perspective uh, in terms of numbers. And I, I like numbers a lot. Um, the Thinking back to 2016, uh, that was the year that globally we surpassed uh, $7 trillion uh, in total annual health care expenditures around the world. Uh, close to a trillion of that, which we spent on pharmaceutical products alone. That same year, an additional $200 billion was spent on new life science research and development. Despite these incredible financial dynamics, and, and we're headed towards $8 trillion very shortly, uh, we witnessed a rise in the prevalence of almost all chronic degenerative diseases responsible for human suffering and death, as well as the obvious ongoing growth and aging of the population. Uh, many experts agree that innovation has all but disappeared in the traditional drug development arena with cost per new product escalating into the billions of dollars, development timeline surpassing 10, 15 years, and the majority of new drug approvals, if they even survive the typical one in 10,000 attrition rates, offering minimal to no benefit over existing therapies. Additionally, we have these widely acknowledged but largely unspoken truths from the pharmaceutical industry uh, that all of the disease output targeted drugs that make it to market are only going to work in a small percentage of their target patient populations due to our emerging understanding of both patient and disease heterogeneity, and none are going to be able of affecting actual cures. Uh, current estimates of preclinical research that's irreproducible is close to $30 billion a year, and that doesn't take into account the billions more that are wasted annually uh, in failed clinical development. Lastly, uh, central regulatory bodies in various developed countries, FDA, EMEA, and so forth, have become increasingly bureaucratic uh, and have fallen behind literally decades in both their ability to keep up with some of the newer scientific platforms, as well as their acceptance of creative clinical testing modalities that ultimately need to address our 21st century understanding of patient, of disease, uh, and of drugs, uh, which ultimately leads us to the inescapable questions. I mean, where has the current approach gone wrong? And where are these cures for the chronic degenerative diseases, uh, which are always promised to humanity, but always seem another 20 or 30 years away? Uh, well, we as a company think there uh, are tremendous opportunities uh, to continue to learn uh, from the natural world. Nature has already provided us with many health solutions. So we don't think about it much, but throughout the 20th century, natural products, primarily those from plant, fungal, and bacterial biocommunities, provided the basis for a majority of all pharmaceuticals, biologics, and consumer healthcare products used by patients around the globe, generating literally uh, trillions of dollars of wealth. Uh, however, many scientists believe that we have only uh, scratched the surface uh, in terms of what the natural world and its range of organisms uh, have to teach us. Um, no, we currently live on a planet with many other organisms, um, which from a health and wellness perspective are much further advanced than we are as human beings. Um, many lower organisms, such as the amphibians, can replace lost or damaged organs and tissues that are identical in both structure and function to the original effortlessly regenerating a wide range of tissues, including spinal cords, limbs, hearts, eyeballs, even large segments of their brains. Uh, in a similar fashion, uh, these species possess fascinating skills for repairing and reversing uh, both cellular and genetic damage. Uh, cancer, as an example, is found to be extremely rare in species that it display an efficient regenerative mechanism, uh, even under the action of potent carcinogens. Uh, in many cases in these species, when cancer does occur, uh, tumors have been seen to spontaneously remodel and integrate into their surroundings as normal healthy tissue. Uh, some of these organisms um, can age in reverse and return to a youthful state later on in life. Um, some can even die and be reborn. Um, and ultimately, it is our belief that uh, merging 
uh, a 21st century understanding of regenerative biology, of evolutionary genomics, uh, even of biocybernetics, what going to offer us important understandings of how these organisms, which I term nature's transhumanists, are so successful uh, at warding off disease and degeneration, and eventual clues on how we can, as humans, uh, achieve the same thing and potentially even go beyond. Um, and it's really important for us to uh, understand uh, these complex dynamics. Uh, extensive study into the regeneration and repair dynamics of non-human species have found them intricately connected to this elegant underlying capability of complex tissue reprogramming and remodeling. Organisms that possess the ability to turn back time biologic time to regenerate, to repair, to rejuvenate almost all or most of their bodies possess two inherent capabilities that they wield in synergy. One of these is the ability to reestablish what we refer to as the embryogenic potential of their cells. And the second, which is if not equally, if not more important, the ability to reestablish the morphodynamic architecture of their tissues, organs, limbs, and body segments. Can we accomplish the same thing for humans? Uh, we believe we can. The ability to tap into and mimic these capabilities with novel bioproducts is going to offer potential solutions to a wide range of disorders responsible for human degeneration, suffering, and death, and help us more rapidly usher in this era of radically extended health spans and lifespans. But our innovations are going to have to be more complex. They're going to have to be broader. They're going to have to be more in tune with the hierarchy of our body's complex control systems, more combinatorial in nature. So what are combinatorial biologics? Essentially, there are biotherapeutic interventions that are capable of doing more than one thing whose physiochemical characteristics necessitate that they do the more than one thing. And they're going to have to can be composed of defined combinations of bioactive substances and moieties. And the good thing is, you know, we didn't create this class. Combinatorial biologics have quietly existed over the years. They occupy broad therapeutic domains. They generate blockbuster returns in certain cases. And they have rather unchallenged exclusivity due to their complexity. The other good news is that central regulatory agencies like the US FDA, the EU's EMEA, and Japan's PMDA have all in recent years come out with more combinatorial drug development guidance under defined regulatory umbrellas and pathways. And this is very exciting. And I suggest anyone to go on interested in this area to go online, Google these respective regulations to basically see how these agencies are becoming more flexible. And in the past, this type of drug development, unless things were grandfathered in, was never a possibility. Uh, or unless you developed individual components of drug combinations and then developed combinations afterwards, which would be, you know, would take decades and, and, and was very cost prohibitive. Fortunately, in this era of combination therapy protocols with HIV cocktails, multi-drug resistant chemotherapy protocols, and so forth, uh, we are seeing a transition away from this simple, single, one drug, one target solution. It's not the way nature works, ever. Uh, nature uses complex combinatorial interventions. Now, these previously spoken of themes at the beginning of the presentation uh, of what I'll call the, uh, the three R's, regeneration, repair, and rejuvenation, uh, while present in many different forms throughout nature and across species, are also interestingly found in the synergistic biochemical dynamics that we find within activated ooplasm. Hence, why BioQuark's therapeutic programs focuses on understanding and deriving novel biochemical materials from these complex zooplasms and applying them uh, in human health, ultimately uh, looking for novel ways to mimic this unique biochemistry. Uh, it is during this unique period of time that uh, ooplasm provides this complete biochemical regulatory architecture required for the new embryo to perform an unparalleled set of tasks, including the, the resetting of cellular age, the reprogramming of both genetic and epigenetic damage 
uh, within our DNA, the remodeling of our organelles, uh, the protection of the embryo from various inflammatory, oxidative, and infectious damage, all done in synergy to help support uh, the embryo's natural development program and a stepwise path to organogenesis and morphogenesis. Um, and ultimately, our goal uh, as a company is, is studying this unique biochemistry and applying it for the induction of novel tissue-specific microenvironments that can lead to effective regeneration and repair. Uh, and interestingly enough, while well, you know, this uroplasm-based reprogramming, you know, once again, this is something we did not create. It's been studied uh, for almost a whole century now in the form of the original pregnancy test back in the 1930s, the original cloning experiments in the 1950s, uh, and then, of course, uh, the recent Nobel Prize to John Gurdon in 2012 for his 1960s work uh, in somatic cell reprogramming, as well as the work here in Philadelphia of Beatrice Mintz in terms of tumor reversion, uh, we as a company uh, obviously see the potential to move beyond the petri dish and now are taking the, the next steps in uh, so-called exporting and purifying these unique uoplasm fractions to, to further study uh, in, in a variety of drug development models. Uh, and we have ongoing research programs across this domain. Uh, our ultimate goal is, um, you know, as opposed to traditional new drug development, which takes a very bottom-up approach in new chemical entities, uh, we are instead of, you know, looking at complex uh, purification of uloplasm fractions with a top-down approach to uh, controlling complex uh, regeneration and form control, which um, uh, is a very unique uh, but very fascinating um, research program, which we are continuing upon uh, since our inception. Um, additionally, we are you know, taking a rather holistic approach as a company. We realize that uh, the repair, regeneration, and rejuvenation equation is much more than uh, pharmaceuticals. So we are, uh, as a company, looking at all parts of the value chain from uh, wellness, consumer packaged goods, consumer uh, dermacosmetics, on through opportunities in uh, nearer term compassionate care use, uh, medical tourism, taking advantage of some of the regulatory and legislative initiatives in various countries uh, for earlier human access, on through to a more complex drug development and uh, in synergy with our partners at the Regenerate organization, you'll be hearing some very interesting uh, company moves in the coming months uh, as we further uh, develop this integrated plan. Uh, ultimately, what does all of this mean for Africa per the, the theme of this conference? Well, we think it means a lot. Uh, I talked about the numbers at the very beginning, needless to say, $8 trillion dollars um, is a big number. Uh, it eclipses all oil, natural gas, coal, precious metal mining around the world. Tremendous amount of wealth uh, to be created uh, in the next generation of, uh, of human health. Um, obviously, uh, Africa suffers the same chronic degenerative diseases uh, that we do uh, throughout the rest of the world. So uh, in addition to uh, wealth generation, we see the ability to, to lower healthcare costs along the way with some of these newer complex 21st century innovations that focus on cure as opposed to treatment. Um, obviously, the development of high check jobs, uh, and in synergy with that, uh, the development of lower tech jobs as well uh, in, aims to alleviate poverty as not all parts of the value chain uh, of the health and biopharma equation Eva, involve uh, the tech side. There is a lot of raw material production, a lot of other operational uh, components to this industry that uh, can help uh, in, in, in equity and uh, economic development. And lastly, of course, tourism, uh, moving beyond traditional tourism to higher value forms of tourism, medical tourism, and so forth, which you already see occurring on the continent, but uh, feel that this is uh, another uh, benefit uh, that we will see once again in, uh, in Africa and other parts of the world, and once again, going back and, and taking advantage of these natural resources that uh, are so plentiful and have so much more to teach us. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, please, uh, once again, I apologize that I did not have the 
ability to be there in living format, but uh, please, anyone with questions, interest, uh, kindly reach out anytime. Here's my contact information, uh, and I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Once again, thank you very much for uh, the time and uh, for this conference. Well, thank you everyone for the opportunity to uh, present uh, today. I apologize that Oh, it was a struggle to try and get off mute. So apologies for that. Um, so that was a, a very interesting um, uh, update from uh, Ira Pasta, uh, who um, has, has, uh, has been working with uh, Taft uh, for some time, um, from, from early inception uh, and with our founder. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The... Um, unfortunately, we don't obviously have him present to have a, a planned Q&A session. Um, I realise that um, I am a very, very poor sub substitute. I'm not a subject matter expert in this area. Um, so I'm, I'm, open, I'm happy to open the floor for, for further discussion amongst the group. Um, please raise your hand if you'd like to, uh, to make some comments uh, on that presentation that we've just seen. Okay, um, our next, we have a, a bit of a, a, a gap um, now until our next um, presentation. Um, who is Professor Ilya Stambler, <clears throat> sorry Stambler, he'll be talking and addressing us on the topic of the vital need to promote longevity research and advocacy in Africa and around the world. Um, he's uh, based in Israel. Um, he'll be joining us at uh, 2.30 Los Angeles time, 2.30 a.m. sorry, Los Angeles time. Uh, just give me two seconds, I will update the, uh, the slides to, uh, to, show, uh, to show you the timings um, so that you can make a note of those. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, um, so you should be seeing uh, that slide now. So uh, again, we'll resume at uh, two thirty. Um, so that's incorrect. That should actually say eight thirty a.m. That's my apologies. That's my fault entirely. Um, which is eleven a.m. New York time. Let me just uh, correct that while we're wrong. Oops. There we go. So 8.30 a.m. Los Angeles time, 11.30 a.m. New York. Uh, that'll be 4.30 4 in uh, London and Lagos. Um, and then we're into the evening for the uh, rest of the participants. If you um, have any questions um, or points that you'd like to raise, my email address um, I will put on the screen here so you can uh, forward me any questions that you might have for any of the sessions that are upcoming. Um, and I can um, obviously put you in contact with um, any of the speakers. Um, that um, that you wish to to uh, to make if you've missed their contact details or, or whatever during the process of the presentations or you miss, have to miss a session, then um, then please feel free to email me and I will uh, endeavour to to make uh, well put you in contact and um, and make that connection for you. So um, 
without any um, additional points or questions, um, I look forward to seeing you all again and speaking with you um, at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks very much.